Morning everyone. Today is the 15th Sunday of the year. Now, I want you to listen carefully. The readings have a, a kind of a constant theme. You're going to see it coming through. The first reading, you have Amos. He's kind of an ornery prophet, but when put to the test, admits that he was called by God. And God is the one who sent him from being a shepherd and a, 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 basically somebody who takes care of trees to speak to the people of Israel. The second reading is a beautiful call about how we have been chosen by God for service in the world. And then finally in the gospel, listen to how Jesus takes the 12, the 12 apostles, and sends them out two by two. He's chosen them, he's empowered them, he's sending them. I'll talk about this in the homily today. Please stand for our opening hymn.
God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reach whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There, earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to the company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. as he has chose us in him before the foundation of the world, 
to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fulfillment of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. In him you also, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. According to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was in fourth grade when I learned some of the most brutal truths of life on a kickball field. Kickball. You know the game. That round red rubber ball. And if you want pride of place in fourth grade, you've got to be able to slug that thing and send it into a new zip code. And when you do, there's no better feeling than to run the bases. But in order to play kickball, of course, you've got to pick teams. And there's a bunch of different ways you choose teams when you're playing kickball in fourth grade. If you're lucky enough, maybe the teacher or the, you know, the recess monitor is going to say, OK, you and you, your captains, go. And let's pick these teams so we can start playing. Well, you know how this works. I'm willing to bet you've been there. The captains are chosen, and you're not a captain, and you're going, oh, God. Because now we got to pick teams. You know how this works, right? Because, you know, at fourth grade, boys and girls, the girls can kick that ball farther if, if you know, they hold their own with the boys. So boys and girls were all playing, and you're just kind of watching, going, okay, 
captain picks the first one, it ain't me. The other one picks another one, that ain't me. And you're praying, you're praying that you're going to get picked soon, not later. Bing, 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 bing. I want that one, I want that one, I want this one, I want this one. And the number of you is shrinking down, right? And when I first started playing kickball, especially when you're the little kid, you know, the one who just is dying to play, and you're tagging along, the worst thing you can ever hear in fourth grade is you're the last one left and the other side goes, oh, you can have him. You've been dismissed. In the scales of fourth grade, you have been found unworthy. Now, you go, you'll grudgingly walk over to the other side, take your spot, and then there's that chance. Because the great thing about kickball, right, is that even though you might not have been chosen first, you're praying, you're just praying that you're going to get that sweet, sweet roll of the ball and you're going to be able to send that thing to Mars. And if you do, because you know, when everybody sees, oh, it's the little person, oh, it's that person who's no good, and everybody just crowds right on in, and, and when it happens, and it does happen, and some kid just hits it sweet, hits it true, and sends it right over everybody's head, it's like that inner child that's cheering on Rocky or Rudy or pick your underdog starts to, starts to shine, starts to glow. But it's all about what you learn in kickball is how you get picked, chosen, selected, empowered. This is what we've got in the scripture readings today. Only it's God who's picking the team. And God has chosen Amos. And in the letter to Ephesians, God has chosen us. And Jesus is choosing the twelve. And they have been empowered. They've been given authority. And they're sent out to preach a message, to drive out demons, to cure the sick, to proclaim good news. And what's true for them, folks, is true for us. God has chosen us. God has called us. And all too often, we sell ourselves short. All too often, we do not live up to the stature, to the glory of what we have, because we have been given a precious and sacred gift, the gift of life, the gift of faith. We've been chosen by God. The question is, will we accept that selection and put it into practice? Now, in light of these readings, there's three distinctly different levels I'd like to just touch on, because to be called by God, chosen by God, we can talk about it in, in these three general ways. First, all of us, young, old, rich, poor, male, female, are called to be disciples of Jesus by living our faith. If you can hear my voice or see my face, we've been called. The Lord invites us to take our faith and live it. And in a practical sense, this applies to everybody. To receive the sacraments, going to Mass, receiving confession, taking time for daily prayer, supporting the church. We can talk about the precepts of the church. We can talk about living a virtuous life. We can talk about daily prayer. That's normal. And it doesn't matter who we are or where we are in the course of life. That's available to us. To live our faith in that basic, general way that's open to everyone. We're called to follow Jesus. And in that general sense, which applies to pray, to live our life, to follow the Lord. That general sense, though, will only take us so far, because that's pretty ambiguous. Let's drop it down a level. Let's talk about our vocation. You see, whether it's single life, marriage, religious life, or ordination, we can talk about the fact that we've made choices, and we're in the process of making choices, and as we're determining our call, we're asking God for direction and insight, because as we make our choices, it shapes what we will do. By choosing one path in life, we're saying no to others. And so what we can find is in our vocation, for those out there who are single, for those out there who are married, those who are parents, there are very specific things that are on the to-do list by nature of our choices. Certainly as somebody who's ordained, it limits certain things and it opens up certain possibilities. This is part of life, but now we've narrowed down the field. And we've created a series of very practical, crucial, and important ways that we live our life. We're taking care of business. God has called us. We've accepted the call. We're living our faith in a very specific way. And the way we put fuel on that fire 
is the way we respond to the call. The way that we embrace being single, being married, as parents, living our lives for the Lord in a formal way. Whatever we're doing, when we put our energy into it, we're embracing the call. So you've got that generic call that all of us have to follow the Lord. Then you've got that specific call that we have within our vocations. There's a third level. It's very individual. It's very particular. And it's rooted to the present moment. It works like this. Do we understand how the Lord is prompting us to act in this moment? It's interesting that through the course of life, we're going to be given different opportunities, different possibilities, different scenarios. The question is, how am I living my life for Jesus Christ today? What is being laid on my heart today? What is it that I have for a possibility that I can engage my life and my faith today? And in order to understand this, folks, let's be very clear. We can't figure that out unless we've got a little bit of daily prayer at the core of our day. That every day we're checking in, every day we pause to reflect. And there's really just two basic questions we want to just set before the Lord. The first is this, Lord, I want to see, help me to see the possibilities to serve you today. Help me to recognize it. It's literally about saying, Lord, I want a good prescription for my spiritual sight. I want to be able to see clearly what you've set before me so that I can recognize in this person, in this situation, here's an opportunity to follow you. Here's an opportunity to serve you. Here's an opportunity to love you. Lord, help me to see the opportunity today. Then second, Lord, give me the strength to make it happen. Sometimes we're going to be given an opportunity that's it's really no energy or effort at all. Sometimes it's really quite simple. Just a smile can make a day. Sometimes it might be an inconvenience. And sometimes it might fundamentally reorient everything we had planned. But friends, whatever it is, we ask God for the grace to see the opportunity and the strength to carry it out. When we're praying every day, I stand before you with certitude. God will show us opportunities to put our life and faith into practice. God calls us into these moments. And when we are praying and when we are open, we will be able to respond with a vigor and energy and enthusiasm and a joy. God called Amos. God calls us. Jesus sent out the apostles. He sends out us. We've been chosen by Christ to live our faith. May we follow him. May we offer our lives. May we pour out our hearts. That we answer the call that we've been given to make a difference in the world today, taking the gift that we've been given and putting it into practice. God bless you all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray this day for the Pope, all bishops and priests, that they may govern the Church with God's wisdom and serve the faithful with Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. That Christ may guide the minds of all civil leaders so as to promote the common good according to God's will. We pray to the Lord. That our parish families will be vibrant communities of prayer, evangelization, and charitable action. We pray to the Lord. That the Lord will be close to the poor, the sick, the dying, the lonely, the unemployed and addicted, and the homeless. We pray to the Lord. For the souls in purgatory, that through our prayers and sacrifices, they may enter into the glory of heaven. We pray to the Lord. For the grace to be completely dedicated to Christ and to remain faithful to our Christian vocations. We pray to the Lord. For an end to COVID-19. For all who've suffered. For all who continue to suffer around the world. And for those who work ceaselessly to bring them healing and comfort. We pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, the spiritual and temporal welfare of our cathedral family. We pray to the Lord. For all of you at home. For the prayers that you so faithfully offer in the comment line. For all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, 
and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and useless worry as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, 
its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Some announcements. First, just want to let folks know uh, here in the community, uh, Eucharistic Adoration will be returning here at the cathedral on Thursdays from 1 to 3 p.m. It will be a, a very simple process. The Blessed Sacrament will be exposed here at the altar in the monstrance, and then it will conclude at 3 o'clock briefly with a, a very simple reposition. But many of you have signed up, expressing your interest in being a part of that. And we're in a good spot right now with numbers and where things are with uh, COVID in our area. So we'll be beginning that. And again, Thursdays, one o'clock. And if you want to stop in for a minute, five minutes, if you just need to whisper a quick prayer, you're looking for a little guidance, just stop in, say your prayer and head out. Some people like to take a longer chunk of time, but whatever it is, just know, we're glad to be able to have the church available for personal prayer on Thursdays from one to three. This coming Saturday, so next Saturday, July 17th, here in the cathedral, downstairs in Crest Hall, will be a benefit for little baby Ellie Carr. Now, this is a million dollar baby. Uh, we just got a, I got a beautiful picture just recently, yeah, yesterday in fact. Uh, this little one is finally being weaned off of her pain meds and she's starting to breastfeed again. She's been in this long journey. This is a million dollar baby who's had more surgeries, folks, in these last few months than most of us get in a whole lifetime. Uh, and praying for it. I, I, I have a, it's first of all, it's Jerry and Teresa Carr's granddaughter, but I had her parents' wedding here, right inside the very beginning of that crazy time of lockdown, when we could only have under 10 people in a space. They got married in that. There were nine people in the room, the bride, the groom, a couple sets of parents, a best man, a maid of honor, and a priest. That was it. We actually got a picture of them in here where to show the social distancing where everybody is, you know, an arm span apart from each other. And I know for, you know, many, many women, that's not the kind of dream wedding you want to have, but when uh, Jenny said to me, Father, I just want to get married to John. And so we did, and they've been blessed with this little girl. I swear she's going to grow up to become a street fighter because you don't survive like this unless you have a, a tenacious will to live. The benefit's going to be next week. The information's in the bulletin. There's a, a beautiful online link if you want to read the story and help this family out because the bills are coming due. For those of you online, please keep sharing. I appreciate it. You're the way that it gets out. We don't, we don't pay for any advertising. We don't do anything. It's just we put it out there. If you're sharing it, it means it gets out to people who otherwise might not get a chance. We want to continue to do that. We're not going to go away, but I do ask if you're using Facebook and you find this at all helpful, please, please keep sharing the masses so that we can continue this work. Uh, if you'd like to get a copy of the homily, you can always go to my website, studypraiserve.com. Put your email address in. It'll be sent right to your door uh, every day. I do also want, to those of you at home, I know that we're in this transition time. I certainly want to make a, a heartfelt appeal to consider coming back to Mass in person. At least in our corner of the world, it's a really good indication of where the numbers are for COVID-19. We gotta be cautious, we gotta use common sense, we're gonna keep doing that. But I do wanna point out that as Bishop has said, people are welcome to keep wearing masks, especially if they have any concerns at all, they're encouraged to. But also per the CDC guidelines, they're not needed. But people can make those decisions. They've got hand sanitizer everywhere. We're going to continue to do basic protocols and continue to keep things as practical as possible. But I'm encouraging you, if you haven't yet, come back to Mass. It's a powerful way to live the faith and to receive the sacrament. And if you're nervous about it on a Sunday, try a daily Mass. The attendance is much smaller, you can spread out, but it's a chance to kind of dip your toe in the water. But we want to have you here. Love to have you here. And as we're kind of slowly emerging from the pandemic, I just invite everyone, please keep prayerfully considering how you can financially support your own parish. A lot of the churches, it was a tough time, a brutal time. But if we work together, we can make it and we can be stronger afterwards. Please stand. The Lord be with you. God bless you, the 
Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a great day.